Assalamu alaikum. I'm Imam Dai Abdullah, the director of LGBT Outreach Program at Muslims for Progressive Values. In this video, we're going to talk about Muslim families, their tribal and clan structure, and how they influence and impact LGBT sexual minorities in their communities. In the Muslim culture, religion is not the only thing that is influencing society, family, tribal, and overall cultural influence on society. There isn't anything that is influenced by these diverse entities like homosexuality, which is seen as being in opposition to all of them. In the 7th century Golden Age and in modern times, the Muslim community continuously struggles with how to place sexual and gender minorities in the system. With arranged marriages, fear of disrupting the honor of the family, and the overall avoidance of shame, Muslims of sexual minorities are forced to confront and struggle with their own identities on multiple levels. The Muslim family structure of the 7th century was patriarchal in form. Generally speaking, there is a male leader, who is the father or a relative guardian, responsible for all external leadership. Then, Generally, there is a female figure, whether a mother or a relative guardian, who is responsible for the internal domain of the family. Of course, then there are the children with the boys leading their sisters. When we look at that family structure, we can immediately see not a whole lot has changed since. Where does this family structure come from? Of course, we know it is a combination of faithfuls from the previous faiths as well as their local culture, combined with all the different cultures that the faith had come in contact with during various parts of history. The natural question then is to ask, what was the impact of that type of family structure on homosexual children? In the 7th century, sexual minorities were a part of the Muslim community as they did participate in specific roles as servants, entertainers, or artisans and craftsmen. Yet the community did not keep them in high regard because of their lack of adherence to the binary of male and female. This impact seemed to take away the identity of the homosexual child in the sense that we don't have any personalities to look to during that period as openly identified as homosexual. Therefore, we can see the cost of the tribal familial impact on homosexual Muslims. In the Islamic Golden Age, we know that identity was once again in conflict with other institutions. For example, El Alamin, the Abbasid Caliph, although married and had a son, El Alamin still struggled publicly between his own identity versus that of his parental expectations, societal expectations, and religious understanding. We know, for example, that his mother had problems with his homosexuality, and as did his older brother, for different reasons. His mother, in an effort to hold onto her power as the mother of the caliph, schemed against her son by providing young and androgynous women with painted mustaches to lure her son out of his homosexuality. In the meantime, his older brother used his brother's homosexuality to gather support and military might from society to overthrow his brother and take his title. Similarly, we can see other homosexual Muslims, such as Abu Nawas, who also seem to have found a way to deal with their homosexuality and their faith, in conjunction with their patriarchal society and tribal cultures. Of course, the Islamic Golden Age was not limited to the Abbasid culture. There were also other parts of the world, such as Muslim Spain, where sexuality and gender were revisited against old tribal ideas. In modern times, in many Muslim societies, not a whole lot has changed. This has to do with the fact that as time went on, people held on to their tribal backgrounds. So, while things have changed for the better for homosexuals in many parts of the world, Muslims don't seem to have matured in a lot of ways when it comes to sexuality, 
family obligations, and what the tribal nature expects. In recent times, we've heard cases of people who have been killed in quote-unquote honor in regards to community shaming of a family because a family member has broken certain social taboos regarding dress codes, socializing outside of their tribal groups, or participating in premarital sexual relationships, whether heterosexual or homosexual. We have also heard about cases of mass arrests in many Muslim societies, as well as religious sects and different schools of thought, or governmental leaders gaining political support and quashing foreign, quote-unquote, infestation of politics or homosexuality. This means the immediate family, the clan, as well as the patrilineal tribal influences are still active in the Muslim community. People are using all of these elements in conjunction with one another to suppress sexual and gender minorities. Additionally, depending upon the location in which homosexual individuals may live, their activities are frequently under the guise of separation of the sexes. Same-sex coupling continues to occur because intimate relationships between the same sex are not frowned upon in Muslim societies. However, as an individual reaches a certain age, usually in their late 20s, the question of marriage arises and becomes a heavily contested issue with mothers and older female relatives leading the pack to find them a socially acceptable wife or husband. In desperation, some homosexual individuals succumb to the familial pressure, knowing full well that such relationship may ultimately fail. If an individual is unable to find solace and inner peace at home, they may seek to study abroad or look for work in another country. In many Muslim countries, you will find a number of Muslim foreign workers living out their lives outside of the typical family structure. In conclusion, we see how the Muslim community of the 7th century has no place to identify as someone of sexual minority in a positive light. As we go down in history, however, we see how there is a generation of Muslims in the Golden Age who are willing to test the waters and to test their society by daring to love people of their same sex. In the modern times, due to many factors, the Muslim community in the Ottoman Empire were able to find a way to secularize their faith and their societies and abandon some of those old tribal influences. Today, the Muslim family, the tribal culture, and the modern times are still in conflict in various parts of the Muslim world.